Hi, so I'm back with the baby and I'm going to talk about my labor and delivery story for this child, baby number two, who is the number seven IVF round. Um, and I'm also going to talk about postpartum preeclampsia, which I got after delivering the child. Uh, so to the delivery. I was scheduled for an induction, so I came in and I didn't have any contractions or anything. So they were talking about doing the heavy meds, but as they were getting everything set up and it was like a really busy day, there was a lot of emergency cases coming in. So the doctors were running behind. Um, I started getting contractions. <laughs> I started dilating on my own without any medication. So that was really interesting. So by the time the doctor did show up, they're like, oh, you don't need the heavy meds. We'll just start with you with like the simple meds, um, like low levels of Pitocin, whatever, um, because you're contracting pretty regularly now and you're dilating. Um, so that was really interesting that my body kind of got the memo that even though it's an induction, I need to start on my own. Um, and then uh, I kind of stalled out just like my first labor. My first labor took 33 hours and this labor took 25 hours. So it was shorter, but I stall out around when I'm dilating four to five centimeters, especially right where I have five centimeters, I kind of just stall. Um, and that's where like the hours are going where they're pumping in more medication to try to get me to continue to dilate. Um, I did get an epidural and that's when I found out that with my first baby, my epidural never worked because I was in pain and I felt every contraction during the 33 hours with my baby, first baby. And this round and I got an epidural, I'm like, wait, an epidural actually gets rid of the pain? What? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, that's how epidurals work. And I, I was shocked to learn that epidurals actually work. I, I was actually debating whether even to get one this round because I was like, there's no difference, epidural or not. I don't know why people take it. So I'm glad I went through with the epidural. They had to insert it twice again, just like my first labor. Apparently my spine is uh, pretty tight and so they put it in the first place and then the anesthesiologist um, said, no, it's not gonna work, so I have to put it in again. So <laughs> they had to take out the epidural and re-put it in but it worked this round. That's all that matters to me. And I loved it and it was beautiful. How it took the pain away, it was just surreal. <laughs> I didn't get to experience that with the first one, unfortunately. Um, anywho, so I started pushing around the 19th hour into my labor because I was at 10 centimeters by then. And it was just, he was a big baby. Uh, he was an eight pounds, four ounce baby, and he was just not, not going down the canal it, without all my pushing. And I had to take rest because I was just out of breath. Like it was, it was so hard. Um, so four hours into pushing, I told the nurse, go tell the doctor I want a C-section <laughs> because I'm 24 hours into labor. The baby hasn't even <laughs> gotten halfway through the canal after four hours of pushing. Like it was pretty terrible. He wasn't really budging. He was too big. And the nurse is like, how open are you to continue pushing? And I said, let me discuss it with the doctor, but I'm pretty... Uh, pretty okay with going to a C-section at this point, which is unfortunate because 24 hours of like labor and then to go to a C-section, it was an easy decision. But the doctor runs in and she's like, ain't nobody gonna get a C-section. You're pushing this baby out. And within one hour of her being there, that 25th hour of labor, that fifth hour of pushing, I pushed the baby out. And... Um, one of the first things I said to the doctor when I saw her after was, thank you for not giving up on me. I'm very grateful she didn't listen to me when I asked for a C-section because that would have been terrible to deal with both um, the dilation and labor of, 
you know, vaginal labor and then a C-section, it, it's just a big mess. So I'm glad she didn't listen. She ran in in one hour, 25th hour, we, we got him out. <laughs> I think I just needed someone who I knew knew what they were doing and were gonna really coach me through it and really be a, a big support through that. Um, Cause at, to that point, I just had like residents and nurses, which were all great, but they just like weren't that strong force and uh, completely sharing themselves and uh, giving me very specific instructions on how to push that the uh, main doctor um, gave me, uh, to finally push him out. Okay, so I totally forgot to add this part in, so I'm gonna just add this little section, uh, about the pushing. What was so interesting and different this round about it was that I would be so exhausted. It was 25 hour labor, five hours of pushing, so I was so exhausted toward the last hour or two that, um, between contractions, I would just, uh, have to fight my sleep so they would tell me to push and I would push 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 and then the second I would laid my head back to the pillow I would just like nap <laughs> so it's like push nap for a minute or two push nap a minute or two and it was it was pretty terrible I was trying to fight that nap because I knew I had to focus on the pushing but I just couldn't so it was like it was so interesting how I would push 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 and then I'd be like push, 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 <laughs> and they would have to tell me, okay, get ready to push, just so that I could just kind of snap out of my nap and continue pushing. It was, it was quite different. Anywho, I did have some tearing. Second degree tearing was the highest. The first one, I had up to third degree tearing, and it was like nine tears, and I hemorrhaged basically almost three liters of blood, and um, it was a mess with the first <laughs> baby post- a delivery but with this delivery it was great I was like wow I'm feeling pretty good and I'm feeling pretty energetic and how I'm feeling right now it was like three weeks postpartum with the first baby like this is this is a much better recovery and the difference with this baby is he got to room with me the first baby went to Nikki right away and it was, I didn't get that bonding rooming in situation because he wasn't breathing right. But this baby, he came out healthy, eight pounds, four ounces, totally fine. He got to room with me right away. And I thought that was my labor and delivery story. Little did I know a week later, I had postpartum preeclampsia where um, I was rushed to the ER and um, they checked my blood pressure there and it was 180 over 109. And it was pretty intense. I put, was put on a seizure protocol um, and they were like, if you waited a little longer, you're like, it could have been real bad. Um, I had a severe migraine that comes with postpartum preeclampsia, hard to breathe. I had pulmonary edema. I had to stay in the hospital without my babies, without my toddler, without my, um, newborn. So I had to continue pumping so I don't lose my supply. Thankfully I didn't, I have plenty of milk, um, that I produce. So that's good. That I didn't lose it during my hospitalization for postpartum preeclampsia, but I was also shivering like uncontrollably because I had a fever due to uh, not the postpartum preeclampsia. I was actually I had a I was fighting a virus of the common cold at the same time too, so my body was like really thinned out and exhausted. Um, but you know, with magnesium, whatever they put me on, all those medications they gave me through the days that I was out in the hospital. Um, they patched me up and now I'm home recovering slowly. I thought it was going to be a quick recovery compared to the first, um, but you know, there's challenges with each delivery and, um, slowly recovering, but I just wanted to, uh, record this labor and delivery story right away. It took me a, a year and a half to record the first one. So I wanted to jump on it this time around. So basically, yeah, labor and delivery was tough, but the postpartum preeclampsia was uh, even, it really set me back with the recovery. But fortunately, we're both home and both recovering, taking it slow. Yep, so that's my story. Thanks for listening.